Greetings, bookworms, and welcome to the Bearded Book Club's production of Pluto from Augie and Me by R.J. Palacio. If you want to follow along in this and all of our productions, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications so you will be notified of all new videos as well as when we do our live shows. If you would like to support Bearded Book Club, you could do so in two ways, both of which are listed in this video's description. Number one, you could become a patron and support us on a regular basis. Or number two, you can go to our Amazon wish list and send us a book as a one-time donation. So without further ado, let us continue. I remember the day Augie's dad brought Daisy home for the first time. Augie and I were playing trouble in his room when all of a sudden we heard high-pitched squealing coming from the front door. It was Via, Augie's big sister. We could, tell, we could also hear Isabel and Lords, our babysitter, talking excitedly, so we ran downstairs to see what the commotion was. Nate, Augie's dad, was sitting on one of the kitchen chairs holding a squirming crazy yellow dog in his lap. Theo was kneeling down in front of the dog trying to pet it, but the dog was kind of hyper and kept trying to lick her hand, which Via kept pulling away. A dog, Augie screamed excitedly, running over to his dad. I ran over too, but Lords grabbed me by the arm. Oh no, Poppy, she said to me. She had just started babysitting me in those days, so I didn't know her very well. I remember she used to put baby powder in my sneakers, which I still do now because it reminds me of her. Isabel's hands were on the sides of her face. It was obvious that Nate had just come through the door. I can't believe you did this, Nate, she was saying over and over again. She was standing on the other side of the room next to Lord's. Why can't I pet him? I asked Lord's. Because Nate says three hours ago this dog lived on a street with a homeless man, she answered quickly. Is disgusting. She's not disgusting, she's beautiful, said Via, kissing the dog on her forehead. In my country, dogs stay outside, said Lords. He's so cute, Augie said. It's a she, Via said quickly, nudging Augie. Be careful, Augie, said Isabel, don't let her lick you in the face. But the dog was already licking Augie all over his face. The vet said she's perfectly healthy, guys, Nate said to both Isabel and Lords. Nate, she was living on the street, Isabel answered quickly. Who knows what she's carrying? The vet gave her all her shots, a tick bath, checked for worms, answered Nate. This puppy's got a clean bill of health. That is not a puppy, Nate, Isabel pointed out. That was true. The dog was definitely not a puppy. She wasn't little or soft and round like puppies usually are. She was skinny and pointy and wild-eyed, and she had this crazy long black tongue kind of pouring out of the side of her mouth. And she wasn't a small dog either. She was the same size as my grandmother's Labradoodle. Okay, said Nate. Well, she's puppy-like. What kind of dog is she? asked Augie. The vet thinks a yellow lab mix, answered Nate. Maybe some chow? More like pit bull, said Isabel. Did he at least tell her how old she is? Nate shrugged. He couldn't tell for sure, he answered. Two or three? Usually they judge from the teeth, but hers are in bad shape because, you know, she's probably been eating junk food all her life. Garbage and dead rats, Lord said, like it was for sure. Oh, God, Isabel muttered, rubbing her hand over her face. Her breath does smell pretty bad, said Via, waving her hand in front of her nose. Isabel, said Nate, looking up at her. She was destined for us. Wait, you mean we're keeping her? Via said excitedly, her eyes opening up really wide. I thought we were just babysitting her until we could find her a home. I think we should be her home, said Nate. Really, Daddy? cried Augie. Nate smiled and pointed his chin to Isabel, but it's up to Mommy, guys, he said. Are you kidding me, Nate? cried Isabel as Via and Augie ran over to her and started pleading with her, putting their hands together like they were praying in church. Please, 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 they kept saying over and over again. Please, pretty, please, 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 please. I can't believe you're doing this to me, Nate, said Isabel, shaking her head. Like our lives aren't complicated enough? Nate smiled and looked down at the dog who was looking at him. Look at her, honey. She was starving and cold. The homeless guy offered to sell her to me for ten bucks. What was I going to do, say no? Yes, said Lords. very easy to do. It's good karma to save a dog's life, answered Nate. Don't do it, Isabel, said Lords. Dogs are dirty and smelly and they have germs. And you, and you know who will end up walking her all the time, picking up all the poo-poo? She pointed at Isabel. 
That's not true, Mommy, said Via. I promise I'll walk her every day. Me too, Mommy, said Augie. We'll take care of her completely, continued Via. We'll feed her. We'll do everything. Everything, added Augie. Please, 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 Mommy. Please, 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 Mommy, Via said at the same time. Isabel was rubbing her forehead with her fingers like she had a headache. Finally, she looked at Nate and shrugged. I think this is crazy, but okay, fine. Really? shrieked Via, hugging Isabel tightly. Thank you, Mommy. Thank you so much. I promise we'll take care of her. Thank you, Mommy, repeated Augie, hugging Isabel. Yay, thank you, Isabel, said Nate, clapping the dog's two front paws together. Can I please pet her now, I said to Lords, pulling away from her grip before she could stop me again. I slid over between Augie and Via. Nate put the dog down on the rug then, and she literally turned over onto her back so that we could all scratch her tummy. She closed her eyes like she was smiling, her long black tongue hanging from the side of her mouth onto the rug. That's exactly how I found her today, Nate pointed out. I've never seen a longer tongue in my life, said Isabel, crouching down next to us. She still hadn't pet the dog yet, though. She looks like the Tasmanian devil. I think she's beautiful, said Via. What's her name? What do you want to name her? asked Nate. I think we should name her Daisy, answered Via without any hesitation at all. She's yellow like a daisy. That's a nice name, said Isabel, who started petting the dog. Then again, she looks a little like a lion. We could call her Elsa. I know what you should name her, I said, nudging Augie. You should call her Darth Maul. That is the stupidest name in the world for a dog, Via answered, disgusted. I ignored her. Do you get it, Augie? Darth Maul? Get it? Because dogs maul? Ha ha, Augie said. That's so funny, Darth Maul. We're not calling her that, Via said snodly to the two of us. Hi, Darth Maul, Augie said to the dog, kissing her on her pink nose. <laughs> we can call her Darth for short. Via looked at Nate. Daddy, we're not calling her that. I think it's kind of a fun name, Nate answered, shrugging. Mommy, Via said angrily, turning to Isabel. I agree with Via, said Isabel. I don't think we should name, should use the word maul for a dog, especially one that looks like this one. Then we'll just name her Darth, Augie insisted. That's idiotic, said Via. I think, since Mommy's letting us keep the dog, answered Nate, she should be the one who decides what to name her. Can we call her Daisy, Mommy? asked Via. Can we call her Darth Maul? asked Augie. Isabel gave Nate a look. You really are killing me, Nate. Nate laughed. And that was how they ended up calling her Darth Daisy.